In the autumn of 1966, Strobel's interest in science led to a life-changing decision. I can take you back to the exact spot where I was sitting. It was in the third floor overlooking the asphalt parking lot. I was in the second row, the third chair from the front. When my biology teacher recounted in great detail this experiment that had been conducted in the early 1950s at the University of Chicago. This experiment that impressed Strobel so deeply was one of the most famous in the history of science. In 1953, Stanley Miller, a graduate chemistry student, tried to demonstrate how life first emerged on Earth. Miller attempted to reproduce the Earth's early atmosphere. He pumped hydrogen, methane, ammonia, and a small amount of water vapor into a maze of glassware. Then sparked the gases with electrical discharges to simulate lightning. After five days, he discovered what he had hoped for, a few simple amino acids, the basic building blocks of living organisms, had collected in the dark residue at the bottom of the glass. Many hailed Miller's experiment as proof that essential components of life could have formed in the oceans of the Earth billions of years ago. The philosophical implications of Miller's experiment were instantly obvious to me. And for me, it was a eureka moment because I heard this and I thought, wait a minute. If you can show scientifically that life can emerge without any outside assistance, if life can emerge just from naturalistic circumstances, then God was out of a job. From there, the acceptance of Darwinian evolution and full-blown atheism, for that matter, was pretty easy. Because if living organisms could emerge by themselves out of this primordial soup without the assistance of any kind of a god or, or supernatural intervention, then they certainly could develop naturally over the eons into more and more complex creatures, just as Charles Darwin theorized in his book on the origin of species. As Strobel embraced Darwinism and its atheistic implications, he was surprised to discover that many Christians believed their faith was compatible with Darwinian evolution. There's no way you can harmonize neo-Darwinism with Christianity. I could never understand Christians who would say, well, you know, I believe in God, and yet I believe in evolution as well. You see, Darwin's ideas about the development of life led to his theory that modern science now generally defines as an undirected process, completely devoid of any purpose or plan. Now, how could God direct an undirected process? How could God have purpose and a plan behind a system that has no plan and no purpose? It just does not make sense. Didn't make sense to me in 1966, and it doesn't make sense to me now. In 1972, Lee Strobel married Leslie Hurdler. Five years later, Leslie, an agnostic, became a Christian. And I thought, this is divorce. This is going to be the end of our marriage. But all the negative things I expected to happen in her as a result of her newfound faith, they didn't happen. And instead, I saw positive changes in her values and her character and the way she related to me and the children. And I thought, wait a minute. She is attributing this to God. And I don't believe God exists. And so that was the main thing that prompted me to say, maybe I need to really investigate this and get to the bottom of this and determine, is there really any rational way I could ever believe that this kind of a God really exists and really causes this kind of transformation in a human being? And so I decided to use my legal training and journalism training, my scientific curiosity, to systematically investigate, is there any credibility to the Christian faith? Because science had played such an instrumental role in his turn to atheism, Strobel embarked on an investigation of major discoveries in biology, chemistry, cosmology, and physics. His studies spanned more than 20 years and included interviews with scientists and scholars as he sought to determine for himself what these discoveries implied about the reality of a creator. Throughout his inquiry, one question remained constant. Does the evidence uncovered by contemporary science point us toward or away from the existence of God? 
Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling once said that science should be the search for truth. And that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know where the evidence was ultimately going to take me, but I really did want to know the truth about God. And what I found shocked me and it stunned me.